Jen brings advice and practical help to these families. She tells them what aid they're entitled to and how they can get it. Like the attendance allowance, which is issued to families who can prove their child is severely handicapped. And the mobility allowance, awarded to parents whose children are too handicapped to travel by public transport. But her most important function is to make mothers who are trapped at home feel that they're not forgotten. Hello. What strikes me first of all, as a mother myself, is the sheer guts and uh, how they cope. On the, uh, the realistic, below the belt level, it's the tiredness um, of not ever being able to have a good night's rest very often, never being able to get the house as tidy as you would like because of the child, maybe his condition, whatever he is. There's a lot of work. There's a say, um, pack and yeah. manage these, because yeah. the other yeah. two are older, yeah. mm -hmm. two babies. Mm -hmm. But the way David carries on, she's mm -hmm. not possible for us to manage oh, him, you know. No. Yeah. With the little one, she's got a lot to go for. Yeah. Yeah. Are you all right at time? I know I've called it a bad time. Uh, I've got another quarter of an hour. Yeah, and then, then we'll go over to the bus and yeah. get in then. You don't want me coming with you? No, I don't want to do studies the problems of handicapped families on their home ground. She gets to know the family and the child. Mrs. Tierney's son, David, for example, is physically and mentally handicapped. Now that David's approaching adolescence, his handicaps have become sharply defined, and so is the way society regards him. It is still a shock to the onlooker very often to see a handicapped child. And that shock must move across like an electric shock into the mother. I think this is mainly because of lack of knowledge. People are scared about something they don't know anything about. The, the mentally handicapped child is at the bottom of our priorities. And that's 